Hey YouTube, it's Deligracy here and today I'm excited because I'm going to be renovating the very well known property in The Sims 3 called Goth Manor. It's from Sunset Valley and it comes with the base game so I'm sure everyone knows it um, very well. And the Goth family is just a classic, classic Sims uh, family that's really been in the franchise the entire time since The Sims 1 through The Sims 2 and now in The Sims 3. So I guess I want to challenge myself and, uh, you know, reinvent the house, make it a lot lighter, kind of take away the creepiness and seediness of the place. And especially, I really would like to get rid of this um, graveyard in the backyard because that is really, really creepy. I don't like that at all. And I don't really want it in my Sunset Valley. So. I'm just going to have a go at reinventing the place. Um, I'm going to make a new family to move in as my clients, which I always like to do. It just helps me, I guess, envision the space a little bit better if I'm kind of decorating it for a certain personality or family. Um, if we look inside, you can get an idea that it's really, really dark, a lot of traditional furniture. I'm going to keep uh, most of the traditional scents in it, however, like most of my uh, renovations, I like to get it looking a little bit contemporary. Um, a few main things that I want to change is this room here, which is kind of like a sunken sunroom with this plantation area and chess table. I'm going to fill this in. I, I don't like the sunken look of it, so I'm probably going to make this into another living area. I am going to keep these tiles but lighten them up. I think I'll probably keep the dark floorboards or the same colour of the floorboards. Um, like I said, completely demolish and reinvent this backyard so there are no ghosts here. It's going to be a nice friendly family home. This sunken area here I'm going to make probably into a outdoor space maybe with a barbecue or I could make it into a gazebo area. Um, moving upstairs, there is one actual physical attribute of the house that I don't like and it's this little um, diagonal wall space here. While on the exterior it looks pretty sweet, um, the interior it's, it's just really tricky to work with so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm not a huge fan of diagonal spaces in houses on The Sims, I know a lot of people do love it but I find it a little bit difficult to work with so I might just do a sneaky demolish of that area. Um, finally moving upstairs where there's this attic I suppose I'm going to make it into something a little bit more useful the space and the tip top room of the highest tower of the place I think I'd like to make this into a viewing room with a telescope that would be really nice. But as an overall thing, it's definitely going to be lighter, it's going to have a friendly vibe, uh, it's going to be a family home, so we'll see how we go. And one last important thing to explain is that I'm going to be using only base game uh, furniture and store content. Yeah, okay. I use store content and base game only, I'm not going to use any items from expansion packs just because it's a little bit difficult to um, put this in your game if you want it and I kind of want to, because it is a base game house, stay kind of true to that. So I'll see how I go. Um, any store items will probably be just decorative things so they won't be that important anyway. Alright, moving on to make the family. The family I've created to move into this house are the Walshes. Basically they're a well to do family, um, that was Camilla the mother and this is Jeffrey the father. And they're definitely well off. They're very fresh looking Sims dressed in light colours. Um, they're ambitious Sims as well. This is their eldest daughter Poppy and she also has a little sister Margot. So I'm going to make the house now. So here is the Walsh family moved into their new house that once was Goth Manor but is now a much more family friendly looking home. I've kept pretty much the exact same roofing and uh, exterior shape of the whole household, how it was. Um, but I've just, you know, chosen this lighter, lighter brick wallpaper here, um, combined with some cream panelling, which gives it a traditional and kind of farmer look about it, I guess. Um, 
Like I said, I've used all base game items and only store content. I've used no expansion packs to finish this house that I know of. If I have, it's a mistake and I do apologize. <laughs> but if you were to download this house, probably um, the biggest thing I've used that would be annoying to load into your game if you don't have it is these uh, porch fences from Midnight Hollow. If you don't have Midnight Hollow and do download the house, I suggest you just grab this uh, country fencing up here and just plop it along here instead with some columns and it'll pretty much give you the same effect. Um, other than that, the store items are only really used for decorative pieces throughout the house, so it's no really big deal. Um, my favourite part of the house is probably the what once was the back graveyard, which ugh, I did not like at all. Um, it's now a vegetable patch, so you have lime trees and uh, garlic plants, onion plants and omni plants, whatever that is. I think there's some bell peppers as well somewhere in there. I, I don't actually know what a bell pepper is. I think it's um, what we call in Australia capsicum or red pepper, I think. But um, yeah, I've never heard of bell pepper until The Sims. I put in this gazebo here. Uh, which I really like, I think it's quite cute. Um, with a little table setting. The pool's been uh, changed around quite a bit. Um, it's just fresher looking, it's um, got a nice curve to it. Also at the back of the garage here I've put in a, I suppose, um, pool house. If we have a sneaky look or a guest room house with a bathroom. Um, and of course some bikes and cars there. But we'll have a look at the main house and how I've changed it. If we go into the entrance room here, it's pretty standard. Um, nothing too exciting going on, but you can see the general colors I've used, which are dark floorboards, um, kind of aged looking, with gray walls and white um, skirting boards. Here's one of the living rooms. Um, I've gone with blue, navy blue, yellow, and browns with some hints of blacks. I really love to layer up plants um, like here, as you can see, you can see the sneaky plant underneath coming through. But from a distance, you don't really notice that, it looks just like a really nice pot plant on the table. I like to put mirrors uh, next to the fireplace, it's a bit of a habit I have in The Sims when I'm decorating, uh, just because I'd really love to do that in my own house one day. Again, merging plants with move objects on, we have a lovely desk area. Um, using some broader wood panels to detail and texture, texturize that to desk. These uh, Venetian blinds here I've turned to timber to match the floor. Um, if we move into the dining room here, it's got a very strict palette of blues and whites, which is quite a, um, a strong contrast, I guess. I love in, in interior design when dining tables actually um, have a bench on one side or an ottoman on one side and chairs on the other uh, two thirds of the table or three quarters of the table, whatever it is. <laughs> um, I think it looks nice. It's, it's definitely not going to be practical for your sims, but from a decorative point of view, I think it's kind of cool. Again, I've used a lot of uh, move objects on to fuse these plants together. Um, I've changed the patterns of this lamp here and um, combined three of them to kind of give this... Uh, it looks like a different lamp, but it's just from the base game. If we go into the kitchen, there's a palette of uh, warm pinks and pastel blues. Again, you can see what you can do with the base game by just layering lights to make this star-shaped light um, by using just this basic one here. Also, um, to tie in colours for a bit of dec decorating advice, I suppose. <laughs> um, if, you, if you go with like three or four colours of your choice, um, maybe two that are muted and two that are bright, um, just try... I oh, can't talk, sorry. I'm very tired. Um, Try and tie in the colours in different objects. For instance, here this pot, I've used both the blue in this carpet and the pink in this carpet, and it just, I don't know, helps bring the room together um, to look more unified. Um, 
If you hold down Alt, I've said this before, while placing objects, you can actually spin them on a 360 degrees uh, angle. So you can make these chairs look like someone's just jumped off them after being in the kitchen. Um, some of the store content that I've bought that I found to be really, really good for my game is this cake stand and this fruit bowl um, and maybe this vase over here as well. They're like 25 sim points and they really do allow you to make your homes a little bit more diverse and, ma and make them look a little bit more lived in. Uh, these wooden spoons, kitchen spoons from the base game, I've just changed uh, the colours of them. I love using curtains, not necessarily on windows, but on archways. I think that, um, I don't know, I think it looks quite cute, kind of draped over the top of the archways into the other room. I also must point out one of my favourite store items, which is this little hanging apron here. I think that's gorgeous, and I use it a lot. Um, so keep your eye out for that if you have some sim points to spare. This room, which was originally the sunken um, sunroom with the ferns, um, I, ju I just covered it all in and made this into another family room. Oh, and they're having family time in here with the fire on. That's so cute. <laughs> and I love how the child sims dress up in their uh, kind of crown and everything while they play. It's so cute. Anyway, um, yeah, I've used browns and greens. Again, this is using move objects on to combine the coffee table and the ferns here. I might actually show you, if we go into buy mode quickly, um, what you can do with the coffee tables and plants. Basically, um, if you grab a few of these plants, this one's from the store, you can just layer them into the coffee table like this and it gives the illusion of a smaller vase being on top of the coffee table. If you hold down Alt, you can actually um, put the plants on top of one another like so and make it look a lot more thicker and full of foliage. Another point I'd like to make that I think that I think is very important. Um, often in the store you can get free items and sometimes they seem to be a little glitchy or not uh, really very nice such as this um, candle slash floor lamp. It's, it doesn't actually allow you to put it on top of tables and it's too short to be a floor lamp. So I didn't initially think I'd have any use for it but if you stick it on top or through a coffee table they actually look like gorgeous little candle holders and you just change the colours and they look really cute. Um, so definitely keep that in mind, just get anything free you can from the store, that's my, that is my advice. Again, merging um, different objects together, this dining table that I put at the back of the couch, I put on top of a chess table in a matching colour and it gives this nice decorative look to the room. I think we'll just stay in buy mode uh, for now. I love uh, this bathroom. I love that it's very vintage looking with this pink bathtub. Again, linking colours, blues and pinks um, in the flower pot here uh, with this chase lounge. I'd love a chase lounge in my bathroom. <laughs> I think it looks um, really, really nice. And these mirrors linked next to each other in a kind of mismatched ombre, I guess, is nice. If we venture upstairs now, um, these mirrors are from the store too, they're handy. They're usually, um, the stock colour is gold, but I've just changed them around a little bit. Again, linking colours um, to match the three together. I also find putting pot plants under stairs is a good use of that space, because um, it can often be kind of a dead space that you don't really know what to do with it. Over here I've made a little, uh, little office, um, which is quite cute. These lanterns I'm pretty sure I got free from the store as well. I do love scattering them if you've seen my other videos. <laughs> uh, the master bedroom I I made quite dark. Um, it does contrast to the rest of the house. It's, I suppose, a little bit more sophisticated. Um, again, I've just layered a couple of plants here to give it a little bit more oof. <laughs> um, and little details like a hint of orange along a coffee table to kind of contrast against a blue fruit bowl or whatever. That actually does make quite a difference visually, so definitely do keep that in mind. All the small things count. <laughs> um, this was free from the store, this ottoman over Christmas. It was from like an India pack or something. 
I have hung these curtains on this bed as well to make it look a little bit uh, different to my other houses. You can also wedge lamps underneath tables here. Uh, don't forget that that can also look really nice. Here's the master bathroom and uh, I love that there's this um, zebra patterned chair there. It's very feminine. You can tell that the mum would love to use that. The black bathtub and an orange chase lounge. Orange and green um, go together really nicely, I think. I use those colours a lot in my households. Uh, here is... Uh, not Poppy. Uh, what's her name? Oh, I've forgotten. Oh, Margot. Margot. Margot's room. I've gone with a yellow. Um, with a hint of red. Um, they go together quite nicely. Don't forget that you don't have to use wood on furniture. You can go with patterns as well and that can be really nice. Um, it can have a really nice effect on decorating rooms. Mismatching lamps and mismatching bed tables add a nice little hint of diversity as well I find. Um, if we move across through the shared bathroom, I've again made use of a curtain over the bathtub. I thought that was kind of pretty. Um, and this is Poppy, the teenage girl's room. Pretty simple, I've made use of white floorboards in here to make them look more feminine and girly. Um, but yeah, I've introduced a bit of peach and oranges in there as well, because I like to have a balance between cool colours such as blues and greens uh, with warm colours like oranges and yellows and reds. Making use of that free autumn and again at the end of the bed. Um, and going up one more floor, what used to be the creepy attic is now a top floor gym. I love putting gyms in my houses because I really want one one day in my own house. <laughs> Again, making these carpets just look like exercise mats by making them flat colours and patterns. Little details like scattering sporting goods also helps. Um, this bright red shelf adds a little bit of vibrancy into the house. Um, this long room here, I wasn't really sure what to do with it, so I actually kept this as a storage room. Although it doesn't look quite as creepy, um, with a few lighter colours. I love using these boxes, they're very, very handy in the game. And if we go up one more floor, oh, I nearly forgot there's um, an extra gym bathroom here with a flower, uh, with a flower, oh my god, I'm so tired. <laughs> with a shower, in case they get a little bit hot and sweaty. Uh, and this is the lookout room, which I love. It's got a telescope peering out the window there. Um, it just makes the house a little bit magical, I think. Then there's a brown chair here to tie into the brown of the roof and a more hidden balcony, I suppose, um, if you need some fresh air or something. <laughs> um, so that's basically the whole house. Um, I think it looks quite different. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, I'm sorry I've had a break from the videos, I have been very busy at work, but I'm hoping to put up some more in the next few days. Um, it's going to be really, really hot in Australia, like 40 degrees Celsius for the next three days, so um, yeah, I'll probably be a little bit tired with, because of the heat, but I'll keep going nonetheless. One last thing I wanted to ask you viewers was if you preferred... Um, watching the process of redecorating the houses. I have done both a mix of just showing the outcome of the house and also um, a bit of the process of actually doing it as a speed decoration, I suppose. So let me know what you like, if you prefer more than the other. And um, if you prefer me decorating houses or building them, I'd love to know. Um, or if you have any ideas of what you'd like to see next. Anyway, I hope you're having a great afternoon or morning or evening, wherever you are, and I'll see you soon. Bye!